It's Cam Dork. Hello, everyone. This is Cam Dork, and welcome to episode 15 of season 3 of My Buildcraft, where we play Minecraft with the mods Buildcraft, Railcraft, and Forestry. And guys, guess what? I'm alive! I'm alive and well and am interested in playing Minecraft once again. Uh, I've been away from Minecraft for quite a while, but uh, I don't really have a reason for that other than I didn't really want to play, and uh, now I do. So, well, here we go. There's a video. Uh, I haven't done too much in this world since we last uh, met or last had episode. Uh, the last episode was we were um, messing with the... Uh, the station here, the railroad station, <clears throat> I did build this building, which I kind of like, and I also kind of don't. I like the inside, I don't like the outside, so I, I, I'll fix that. Um, but anyways, we set up the station logic, I built the station here, and I put in the logic components over in the, uh, the oil village. We will play with Railcraft a little later, but that's not what this episode's going to be about. Primarily in this episode, we're going to go in our main uh, house again, so... I know for many of you it's been quite a while since seeing this. It's amazing to see it all again. It's still here. Um, but anyway, uh, so going in again, we're going to do some stuff down here. And ugh, there we go. Um, we're going to do something we... Uh, we're going to mess with something we, we messed with a, um, a few episodes ago, and that was this little system here. Uh, this is a nether portal, of course, but there's nothing special there. But the special stuff is all this business here, and eventually... Basically, all this stuff was a the way in which I could use to transport lava from the nether directly into the overworld. And we can do that with, um, well, the world anchors, which uh, there's one in the nether and there's one here. So we can keep both of them loaded at the same time. And then we were sending lava through this nether portal um, in the form of an item. Uh, we were spitting it through with a dispenser and out comes lava cans. Oh, piece of sandstone apparently too. I was messing around earlier. Um, and those lava cans are great, but it's not lava, right? I want lava in this tank. So currently what I have to do if I want to transfer these cans, I have to right-click on this tank. And by the way, you lose the cans in the process. You do transfer the lava, but this is a burdensome process, something I do not like to do. And if any one of you, uh, if you've been watching my videos, you know that this is not the type of solution I like to find for my little problems in the world. These aren't really problems, these are first world problems. But uh, they are, um, for, for things I like to do in the world, I like something a little more elegant than this. Something a little more sort of no mess, no fuss. Uh, so let's go into the nether real quick and see how this thing works, because it's going to be critical to understanding how we are going to change it. So um, in case you forgot, which I did at first, so I had to remember, uh, I had to remember everything in terms of how it works. So the whole idea is that we're using dispensers to spit um, um, cans of lava into the overworld through the portal. So uh, again, we have uh, we have this thing over here. This is a world anchor. It's from Forestry. Oh, I'm sorry, it's from Railcraft, and it keeps things loaded in the world. Uh, it keeps things loaded in these chunks around it, so it'll keep the Nether loaded while I'm in the overworld, and vice versa. <clears throat> um, this is just an engine to power that. Oh, I don't need to power that actually. Um, and, uh, uh, so, so what'll happen is cans will be thrown through the portal in the overworld in the dispenser you saw behind the portal. They'll be sucked up by this, um, uh, obsidian pipe, and they go here, they go up here, uh, they go into the hoppers, and eventually make their way into this, which is a bottler from the forestry mod, and this will put lava into a can. And, um, then it goes down into here, and it goes into the dispenser, and, uh, this little thing is a nice elegant way to have the dispenser spit out an item any time that it has an item in it, just set so that items in inventory, it'll put out a redstone signal. So the item will be spat, spat out, there'll be nothing left in the dispenser, and so it'll turn itself off automatically. So it's a real nice way to spit items into there. Um, yeah, this is where I was before, so when I put an item in here, it gets spat right into the portal, and uh, now that's going to the overworld. And if it was loaded, it should already be picked up, but uh, we're going to go through the portal again. We might see us pick it up, or it might have been picked up by the pipe. We'll see. Okay, looks like we didn't pick it up, so I'm guessing it will make its way eventually back into this chest again. That was why you saw one before I was messing around. So how are we going to change this, though? <clears throat> because right now we have items of cans coming through. I want liquid in the end. Well, it turns out we can use we can use uh, buckets actually. 
Um, buckets don't work with... Oops, that was that was not intended. Buckets do not work properly with dispensers. Uh, with dispensers, the... Well, you know what? It's, it's actually... Oh, darn it. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, let's go to the uh, to a creative world, and I'll show you kind of what we're going to be doing uh, in this episode today and what the properties of dispensers and droppers and how we're going to use them to solve our problem. All right, so I'll be right back. So here we are in a creative world, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about dispensers and droppers. I never really messed with these too much, so I didn't quite honestly know really the difference because I never really messed with them. Uh, but once I started to realize that I had a problem, let's go see... Uh, well, first of all, let's see how they how they work. Um, so let's put a, uh, a bucket in each of these. And first of all, and just say, okay, this is a dropper. Uh, let's see what happens. It spits out the bucket. This is the dispenser. It spits out the bucket. Okay, so that's that's pretty simple. You probably already know that one. That's 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 no big deal. Um, let's see what happens when I uh, add in. In this case, I'm going to add in what we have now, which is where is it? The forestry lava cans, right? They're for forestry. So let's uh, we could use any old liquid, but let's go lava can. Okay, let me just stick them in there, I guess. Um, so there's a lava can uh, and a lava can. So we'll look at the dropper first. Okay, spits out the can, and now the dispenser spits out the can. So dropper and dispenser both spit out the can, no difference. And that's what I saw at first, and I'm like, well, I guess it doesn't matter what I use. Um, silly me didn't realize that there is a different way in which they work, these things work, when you have lava buckets. So if I have a dispenser over here and I have my dropper, now let's see the difference when I take uh, the uh, dropper, spit out a can. Oop, uh, well, you didn't see that. Hold on a second. <laughs> I picked it up. It spits out the, the can as an item. So it spits out just like the same as the lava can. No difference there. And now if we power the dispenser, we're expecting the same thing. But indeed, actually what happens now is something totally different. The can is just, the bucket is just emptied. And I realized that this was the case and I said, wait a minute, this is the way to solve my issue. I can use this as a way of making sure that I spit out lava in the overworld, but I spit the can into the nether portal. So now what you see, the solution to our problem is simple. First of all, all we have to do is switch from the dispenser to a dropper in the nether, and that will allow us to dispense out the the can, or I'm sorry, the bucket full of lava. Except in the overworld, we're going to have to use the dispenser to spit out lava. And we're going to have to do some kind of funny things with some redstone. And we're just going to do that in the overworld itself. Basically, we're going to put together kind of this, but possibly simpler. Uh, but I'm going to just talk through this in the overworld. We're just going to build it there. And first of all, though, the first step is to switch out our dispenser in the nether for a dropper so that we can actually uh, spit out buckets as items, filled buckets of lava as items. All right, so uh, I'll meet you there and we'll start fixing this problem. All right, well, let's switch this dropper, or I'm sorry, dispenser for a dropper. This should be the only thing that we need to do in the nether. So wait, did that go through? Did it get sucked up? Oh, it got sucked up. Uh, never mind. here, there, oop, 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 and there it is. Well, that, we'll get it back. It's no big deal. All right, no, I don't want to hover. There we go. Um, I guess it goes into there. Come on, we want to get our dispenser back. <laughs> well, that was silly. Uh, yeah, there we go. Dispenser, and sure, let's grab the arrow because I don't know how that got in there. Well, that was probably why I have 63 arrows instead. Um, okay, so that's pretty much everything. So now this is a dropper, so it will spit out full cans of lava. Um, everything else in here should be just the same. There really shouldn't be any change whatsoever that's needed. Um, I do have the world anchor loaded and ready to go so that when we do stuff here, we're, we're all good. Ooh, there we go. Um, I did clear out some area behind this thing, and uh, we're going to be using this area to set up our spot. So first of all, we need to set this dispenser down. Now this is going to actually dispense lava, so um, uh, we'll do it behind here. Yeah, we'll do it like here. Well, we have we have plenty of room, so we can do. Okay, let's let's not let's not kill ourselves in the lava. Let's put it right here. So the dispenser's right here. We're gonna leave this area right here for the lava to go. So that means we need a pump. We need a pump. 
and I don't have a pump. But that's okay, we'll set everything else up uh, instead of the pump. So imagine that there's going to be a pump there. There's going to be a pump right um, right here. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the pump. So we need two, uh, we're going to use two redstone engines just to run this pump. It's going to run all the time. Uh, yeah, this is a lot easier to run when there is a pump here, because th that way the pump, the uh, the engines position themselves correctly. So in the meantime, we'll just put a piece of block here, and oh, we'll put the, we'll, we'll put the engines later. So this whole this whole section is going to be for pumps and the other stuff. All right, then we're going to have a, uh, a liquid pipe go here to right, oops, right into here. Yeah, right into here. So this will be where the liquid pipe is. Okay, so imagine this is a pump. That's going to be where the lava is, and it's going to go sp spitting right into this tank. And um, and then we need to get things into this guy, and in which case we need a... Uh, I, well, we're just going to set up a, a, a normal transport pipe. Now, right now, what's happening is this uh, redstone engine is powering constantly this obsidian pipe, and there are pipes going underneath, so we're gonna we're gonna intercept this pipe. So right now it's going to that chest right here. You can just barely see it. So I'm just gonna intercept the chest. Oh no! And we're gonna take it here. Okay. And in this case, we're we're actually uh, now we're, we'll uh, we'll do it back a bit further, and then I, then I'd be I'll be able to hide this a little better, but not until later. And right now we're just gonna come here, and we're gonna go right into this dispenser. Okay, now this will work. Right now, what'll happen is oh, darn it. Um, this will kind of work. Uh, all we need to do is set up a system where we automatically spit out things, which is uh, this, right? So if I say that items in inventory, redstone signal, and now anytime an item comes in here, it'll send out a redstone signal. It'll pump out the lava. Once the lava bucket comes in here, we'll be spitting out lava, and the bucket will remain in here. So we need a place to get rid of the bucket. And the way we're going to do that is just pump it out with an emerald transport pipe. Now I need a bucket. Uh, I have a bucket of water. We're just going to... Oops. We'll take a bucket of water and empty it right here. Goodbye, lava. Most of it. Anyways. Um, so, yeah, we'll do it that way. And I'll say filter as a bucket. All right, now we'll pick up that water again. Thank you. And we'll let's not have things spawn. And now this is set to automatically... Oops. Yeah, so it'll pull out a bucket when there's something to do that. Uh, we will give it a means to do so by saying whenever there is items in inventory, so there's something in this dropper, Red, not redstone signal, uh, energy pulser, right? So it'll energy pulse. It will only, however... Ah! No! There we go. It'll only uh, pull out the the buckets because that's and an empty bucket, not a full bucket. So that's cool. And now we can actually set that to... Um, we can set it to go right back into here if we want. But for now, I think I might just put it in a chest uh, because I don't know if I want this to be a loop yet because I have no means of stopping it. So right now I want to make sure that it just it goes where it should go. Um, it's just gonna go into a chest. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a floating chest right here. Boom. okay, that's where my empty buckets will be. I just want this thing to work and then we'll figure out how to make it pretty later. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to get things ready and we're actually gonna get gonna see it running in time. I'm gonna switch this pump out. I'm gonna give it some redstone engines. We're gonna get all that set up and then we'll give it a try. okay? So I'll see you in just a moment. And we're back, and now we have buckets. So we'll throw these 16 buckets in here, start it out. There we go. Okay, so off they go. Uh, this should work just fine to spit them out. There they go. And they're going into the nether right now. So we'll wait for all 16 to go in. Uh, this is still a dispenser. I didn't change that, but it's no need to change it. So all 16 are in, I believe. Um... And they should have been sucked up mostly by now, I would think so. And right now, oh, we got a weird graphical issue going on. Okay, so buckets are coming up like they should. Uh, nice and slow, that's okay. This is on. It's just, it's just waiting for stuff. It's okay though. I, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. Um, uh, but here we go. It takes a while. Just give me a second. So bottler, and this is a dropper. Okay, whoa, hey now. 
Okay, well, anyways. So there is one, I think. So that we should be able to see... Yep, yeah, there, see, you can see the lava buckets coming in. And so they're coming in right now. They're dropping as buckets, which is good. So this is working. And now you'll see we, we will probably uncover a, a, a problem here. So just hold on a second while we... Oops, let's scoot by. Oh, hey, cool. Hey, look at that. <clears throat> and so look at this. It's working. But you might notice we have a problem. So the dispenser um, does, in fact, work. And this does, in fact, squish out lava just like we should. There it is. Lava coming out. Awesome. But what is happening here is that if the dispenser gets an item and then gets another item. See, there you go. So that's working. But if it gets a uh, another bucket before the lava is picked up, like now, it's wasting lava. So how do we make sure that this dispenser only spits out an item when there's no lava present anymore? So we're going to have to look at some redstone logic to fix that. But uh, as of right now, this is actually working just fine. For the first time, we are actually... This is lava from the nether, and it's being um, filled up into buckets, spat out with a dropper, and look at this. This is so cool. It's actually super working. I'll, I'll let these 16 go, and then we're going to... Um, and then I'm going to change... We're going to figure out how to change the system so that we can actually only... Uh, we, we, can, we can fix our, our, our extra buckets problem, I guess, right? When there is a, a bucket that comes through when there is um, already lava here, okay? So we'll, uh, I'll be right back, and we'll fix that. All right, let's go and fix this problem now. And there's actually two problems, but we won't see the other one, probably. Uh, items can come in here so fast that it actually clogs things up. But if they come just kind of fast, as in when we get another bucket before this pumps out the lava, which it almost did right there, uh, and it's going to do right now. See, right there, it, it spat out another bucket, but there was already lava here. So before it got the chance to pull the lava back out, it spat out a bucket, which does happen. So we want to avoid that. Uh, one of the easy ways to do it is, first of all, we're going to put a chest right in between here. We're just going to have a buffer so that only one item comes at a time. Well, that's fine, but how do I know when to send an item? And we're going to use uh, the status right here of this pump to help us along that path. And we're going to use this trigger, which says has work. So if this has work, we're going to send a red pipe signal. And so notice that this turned on not immediately after lava was under here, but pretty soon thereafter. And once this uh, this signal turned on, hold on, see, it doesn't turn on yet, but now it does, and then once it's pumped out some, it turns off. Now, we could do, do some clever things where we do, like, edge triggering and everything, but um, the easiest way to do is just to, to use this signal as is, as a way of saying, hey, send it out. Um... And uh, so we're gonna do. We're gonna put a little chest in between here as well. I think we'll put it right here is totally fine. And right here, we're gonna use this to spit out an item. Um, so now you might think that we can just take this red pipe wire signal. And here, let me just wire it up while I'm talking. So uh, we might think we can just use this red pipe wire signal right here, since it says it has work, maybe we'll add a delay or whatever, and then put it here to say, when it has work, uh, we'll just send the signal of redstone here and uh, and spit back out an item. Um, we can't do that, though, because what might happen is we might be sitting here for a long time, and you notice this red pipe signal is not on any longer. What we really need is a way of saving this information to say, hey, we have to remember that the pump had lava here, and so it must now be, after some short amount of time, it must now be ready for something to be sent its way. Um, and the way in which we save things in memory is to create a little gate. And the gate that we love to use, which is actually a piece of memory, it's one bit memory, is called an RS nor latch. We make these things in every single Redstone episode, I believe. Um, it's I, I don't think I've done anything ever without making an RS nor at least once. Uh, this is my favorite design. There's plenty of different ones, uh, but this is how I like to do it. <clears throat> and how it's set up is, uh, if you have been never listening to me ever, um, the feature of the RS nor latch is as follows. Basically, when one side is on, the other side is off. When you 
gives uh, a power to the to, to one side that side remains on until the other side remains off and like it's basically a switch so if i power this side it stays on if i power this side it stays on and turns off the other side so it we can use this as a way of saving memory so uh, saving in memory so if the if the rs nor is in this state then that means that well it's not ready right this thing has not fired once this realizes there's lava oh must be a storm out there, huh? Um, then uh, this this will get powered, and in uh, this configuration will indicate that hey, it's ready. Um, and so we can use this as a as a way of uh, detecting that indeed things are ready. So we can't just wire this pipe signal up directly because we need to save this state. Uh, we can do some pipe gates where we actually use the pipe gate to figure out. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this back one. It's actually not a good location right now for it, so it's I, I, I could use it that way, but I'm gonna I'm gonna move it back one. I think that's a good back one. All right, that's kind of annoying in Minecraft, but that's okay. That's okay. Weather, weather, weather happens, right? Weather happens. We all have it happen to us. Okay. Whoa. There we go. There's a lot of lag going on. Um, so I'm gonna use this to uh, make another signal and this time we're just going to use the red pipe wire signal have it run over here and what i'm going to do is put a iron and gate with an autarchic pulser and have this set to say if you have a red pipe signal on and you have items in your inventory then you're going to do a single energy pulse okay so uh and then i'll have this set to do this hold on uh, redstone on red pipe signal all right so it sends an item hooray because it's set to single engine uh, item pulse right um we can also have it set to redstone on as well so if that's going to be the case hold on oops yay okay good so that powers the redstone so what i want that to do <clears throat> is we'll use this side of it to reset this rs nor i think this works let me see. Okay, so that'll be that'll be set. So that shouldn't be. Oh, it's an and yeah, it's set to and gate. So that's it should be using. Oh, hmm. Okay, well I guess we can't do it then that way. Okay, so we actually have to specifically set this to uh, send out a redstone signal. Otherwise, um, we can easily do that though. We can easily do that. I'm gonna actually say when there is a item traversing send that a redstone signal okay so we'll use that as the way to reset this whoops we use that as the way to reset um the switch and i don't know what's going on today today i've been having so much trouble with movement where it just gets stuck um there we go so yeah i'm like totally stuck i don't know why i don't know what's going on well that wow wow what is happening Anyway, um, so this should work. This should actually just work fine. Uh, we need to actually send some items through. Uh, so I need to make sure this is in a ready state. I need to indicate that this is ready. I'll just power this side. So it powers this side. It sent out an item and then turned this on, which reset the RS nor properly. Let's see if this works. So it should turn on the one side. And then it switches back, and that works beautifully. Oh, huh, that's pretty pretty good. Yeah, that works pretty well. Uh, we may want to delay this a little, just just to make sure that. Um, yeah, I think I think that'll that'll work. Let's see. And oh, okay. So right now it's in a ready state. So right now it's in a ready state. Right, bleh, it's in a ready state, but there's no item here, and I think that means that we've run out. Yeah, we've run out of buckets let's just test this one last time so there are a few things we need to possibly change uh if this if this doesn't start to spit out buckets of lava from the nether uh it'll be because well oops here it'll be because um the engine over there we need to smack it with a hammer every now and or wrench every now and then but i think this will work that seems to let's see Oh, yep, yeah, it's working fine. Okay, so that, that engine's still running. I just saw a bucket of lava come in. So right now the bucket of lava comes in. The RS Nor said it was ready. It's now switched to the other way. It will hold on to this item right now until it is ready for the next one. 
which will be right whoops now it sends another item out and then while this goes through it resets the switch pretty cool this is working fine yeah this is working fine all right cool so we actually fixed it so we fixed the problem and now i can have a never-ending supply actually no i don't have a never-ending supply yet but we can set this up so that i do uh, I might actually just, uh, I'll do that real quick, and then I will be right back. We're going to make some extra features to this so that I can actually just have this go in a loop, and that will be pretty cool. All right, I'll be right, uh, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, well, we had an episode, and we made a thing. So I fixed this up so that now it is a never-ending, basically, transfer of lava. Uh, and it's, it's doing exactly what I wanted to in the first part, which was take liquid lava from the nether and do it automatically transfer it to me right here in the overworld. This is cool. And uh, so all I did was uh, I, I hooked this up and uh, put an iron gate there. Oops. Um, we can probably set it up where I have a system where I switch it back. I, I might have a, a way of, of pausing it or stopping it. But right now, this is it has no way of stopping itself. Um, that's fine. For now, I'll just let it run, and it'll be okay. We shouldn't need anything ex really more than just a stack of buckets, which is basically what we have here. We have a little bit under that, just because, well, anyways. Buckets got lost in transfer. I also fixed something in the uh, in the nether here, which I guess there is a stop to this system, and that is... Oops, I probably have picked up a bucket or two. Yeah, I picked up some lava. <laughs> Um, uh, that's that's the only problem with this with this system is that I have to actually use this for transport and so I end up picking up lava buckets. Um, I fixed this so that this actually should work now, um, but the way to stop the system is just don't give it any coal. Um, but anyways, this is set to um, this only sends a red pipe or I'm sorry a redstone signal when the blue pipe signal is on and the red pipe signal is on. And uh, the red pipe signal is is this. It's just when power is requested. Um, and the blue pipe signal is set to be on when e the engine is in any one of these states. And this is to avoid, again, it's avoiding the red state, if you will. And it's also avoiding the... That means this won't overheat, because before this was overheating, and then I'd periodically have to come in here and whack it with a wrench. Um, but I don't have to do that anymore, and now I can just stop the system by taking out the coal. So that, that, that will work just fine. Uh, but for now, this is working pretty well. I probably could have done exactly this by, instead of saying red pipe signal on, just say power requested here, but it's okay. This works fine. It's my world. I can do what I want. Uh, but anyways, this is, uh, this is pretty cool. So I think it's waiting for more buckets probably, which I'm sure will happen in... Ah! Right there. <laughs> in my face right there. Uh, so yeah, I picked up three buckets along the way. Uh, I still have a place to drop these off in case I want to add more buckets back into the system. And um, yeah, and oh, I need to drop off this lava bucket, which I can do right here. Boom. There we go. All right, so I think, yeah, that's good. Okay, so cool. So kind of a foolproof system, or at least I'd like to think so. And this is working great. And even a zombie pigman has come along. He's so interested in what we had made here that he wants to hang out with us too. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. It's been uh, it's been fun, and it's been great coming back to the to things here. I will try to record a little more often than I have in the past, for sure. And uh, we'll be seeing another Minecraft video shortly. I don't know what the topic of that one will be, but we'll get to it when we get to it. All right. So in the meantime, take care, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.